What's going on, everybody? Uh, it is Tuesday, May 22nd, and we've got a big 15-game slate. That's why Jake and I are jammed into the center of this screen right now, because I ran out of screen real estate. There's too many names on this damn thing. Um, yesterday was like it never happened, but broke even. So as far as I'm concerned, the first day of the week didn't even happen, and we're on to Tuesday. How did your Tuesday or how did your Monday go, Jake? Not as good as that. I would have loved to break even. So I, I was talking up Tanaka early on the the show yesterday, and I ended up MMEing. Played twenty lineups, so I guess not like MMEing, not not one hundred and fifty, but twenty lineups, and uh, I think eighteen of them had Tanaka, so they were just they were dead. Uh, I think I don't even know what he ended up with, but it. Clearly wasn't enough. I think like eight or nine yeah. or something like that. Just not going to cut it. Uh, so that's kind of what happens when you go all in on a pitcher. So I wouldn't suggest getting 90% or 100% of a guy. But I just play more aggressive when I MME than I think most people do. Um, so, but like if you would have had a good game, I probably would have cashed 70% of my lineups. So yeah. Turns out you needed yeah. more Jason Vargas. Yeah, dude. I... I, I was kind of mad at myself for that because I had seen like his swinging strike numbers were good, but he had get, been like getting hit hard and like he had some whiffs and stuff. And he was forty six hundred as a favorite. Like there's a guy like that tonight where I'm going to consider him, and I'm kind of mad at myself. I didn't at least consider going with Vargas yesterday. Oh God, you're going to say Lance Lynn, aren't you? Yeah, he's such a twin homer, dude. <laughs> All right. Well, as soon we can as talk I about saw him. twins there, I didn't. I wasn't even because I was gonna say, "Is it Brock Stewart?" And then I was like, oh, no, "No, it's obviously Lance Lynn." <laughs> no, I, I, Brock Stewart. He's gonna go like a few innings, right? He's a reliever. Yeah, I don't. He's not gonna have a long night. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, it, it could be Lance Lynn night. Oh God, you love the twins so much. It's insane. <laughs> All right, you ready to start this off? Yeah. Let's do this. First game up, my Braves uh, at the Phils. Braves, 4.1 run implied total. Phillies, 4.4. It's a 54% chance to win for the Phillies. Brandon McCarthy going for Atlanta. Vince Velasquez going for Philadelphia. Um, I like Velasquez quite a bit on DraftKings. I think he's pretty well underpriced, especially needing two starters. Although... There's this chunk of guys from Gaussman down to, I don't know, maybe Caleb Smith, where you can pretty much rotate in anyone you want. Uh, a lot of just overlapping salary, over very similar outlook. So I'll probably end up with a decent amount of Velasquez. Um, you know, ownership's going to be pretty spread out with 30 different starting pitchers, but... That's all I'm looking at really here is just Velasquez. No Brandon McCarthy for me. Yeah, I like Velasquez a little bit here. I'm not super crazy about targeting against the Braves. I have them as one of the best offenses against both right-handed and left-handed pitching. Yeah. Um, so they're just they're just a really tough matchup. Velasquez has been really good, though. So I don't mind going to him here, um, especially like if you're mass multi-entering. Um, 7500 is a good price for him. He could certainly rack up some strikeouts here. I'm a little bit worried about the lefty power with Freeman and Albies, but I'm not actively targeting against him, not looking to jam him in a ton of my lineups. Um, I just think he's sort of an okay play. There are some weather concerns here, though, right? I'm seeing a little bit of rain during the game time. Yeah, I think this is actually the only one that has any impact on starting pitching. I don't think any of the weather... Um, well, maybe Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, but like I don't see any weather. I don't see any concerns for like postponed games. It's mostly just rain delays, so that's really the only risk. 
I think they'd be more likely to just start a little late here. Um, so it's not a game that I'm going to be giving any sort of discount because of uh, because of weather right now. Only one that I see that could do that would be Pittsburgh Cincinnati, and even then, I expect the full game to play. So yeah, okay, yeah. So I mean, Velasquez is fine for me. Not my favorite guy by any means. Um, no interest in McCarthy. He did have a really nice start against the Cubs, but I don't think I'm going to him on the road against the Phillies here. Um, I don't, I, I'm not super crazy about bats either. I, I like Santana and Herrera. I like Freeman and Albies, but any stacks for you in this game? It looks like I have probably like three or four lines worth of the Braves on DK, and that's basically it. Uh, I'm not really looking at the Phillies on either site, and I don't have any Braves on FanDuel. So Albies, Acuna, Freeman, and Flowers look to be happening for me like 3% of the time on DK, 4% of the time maybe. Yeah, I have no problem with that. Um, yeah, I'm just not. This isn't a game that I love. Same thing. Just Velasquez for me. And that'll probably adjust itself throughout the day as some of these lines move around and some lineups uh, fit. If I see our projected ownership has Velasquez at like 5% and I have him when I run my stuff at 20, I'll knock Velasquez down to like 12 or 13 and redistribute 7% of that to Cahill or Tyon or Wheeler or something like that. You know, somebody that looks underrepresented in that same section. Yep. All right. Padres and Nats. Padres, 3.5 run implied total. Nats, 4.8. It's a 64% chance to win for the Nats. Eric Lauer going for San Diego. Jeremy Hellickson going for Washington. Um, this is not a pitching game for me. Specifically, not a spot where I want to use Hellickson at, let's see, the eighth most expensive pitcher on the slate, which uh, that's like they're going to get a performance from 2012 for him. Uh, I'm not looking at either pitcher here, are you? No, no, no Hellickson, certainly no Eric Lauer. I like the Nationals bats here. Lauer just gives up a ton of hard contact to righties over 50% on the season. So Rendon for 3900 still not priced up enough. Spotlight Turner hitter, for day two. He should be, yeah. I, I love Rendon. Um, Mark Reynolds, you can play at first or third for 3700 He's been raking against lefties like he's done, he's done his whole career, pretty much. Uh, Severino at catcher for 2800 I like. And then there's also this guy named Bryce Harper, <laughs> who's in a lefty-lefty matchup. But if you're stacking up the Nats, you probably assume Lauer's not going to be in there very long. And I don't mind going to him lefty-lefty. And I even like Michael Taylor. He just has a tough time making contact. But when he does, it, it goes a long way. So I would go all the way down to Taylor. Um Completely with you. Uh, the Nats are my most popular stack on DraftKings right now. There'll be a spotlight stack. I don't have them as much on FanDuel. Pricing's not quite as good. Like Reynolds, for example, has the same price. Rendon, only $100 cheaper. Uh, so it makes it a little bit tougher to make uh, everything work. But I'll still have them in abundance on both sites. Love Turner, Rendon, uh, you know, Harper's Harper. Uh, I like Reynolds a bit on DK. Severino is a great catcher option as part of a stack. I'm getting a lot of Juan Soto, which is fun for me, um, you know, especially in this lefty-lefty matchup. Uh, I don't expect – well, I don't know. He could be popular after being like a young guy that donged yesterday that could artificially knock him up like another percent of ownership, but I don't think too many people would really be on him. Uh, but he's just priced really nicely. 2500 on FanDuel, 2900 on DK. Uh, Nats with a really big implied total. I just, I'm just i a big fan of the Nats tonight. I'll have them a ton. Mm -hmm. And no yeah. Padres whatsoever. Yeah, same with me. Yeah, it's, it's hard not to like the Nats here. The uh, implied total is third best of the slate, maybe fourth. <laughs> you can't beat it. Padres not very good. It is kind of shocking how bad the Nats have been against left-handed pitching, though. Yeah, they, they corrected that last night, though, a little bit. Yeah. At least they certainly tried to. 
of all the guys that I could have picked as a spotlight hitter yesterday, I took Rendon, the only guy that not go like totally bananas yesterday. Ten run game and Rendon was just one for four with a walk, super pedestrian. Like he didn't, even, like he wasn't on the same team. <laughs> That's how it always works. Yeah. So hey, I also said take a bunch of nats, so I'll take it. All right, Angels and Blue Jays. Angels, 4.4 run implied total. Blue Jays, 4.4 run implied total. That's a 50-50 game. Uh, Garrett Richards going for the Angels. J.A. Happ going for Toronto. Um, I'll probably get to a little bit of Happ. I might get to, you know, a line or two of Richards on DK, but they're not my two favorite pitchers of this slate. I have a hard time really wanting to pick between the two of them. It's just kind of like... It's it's just an average matchup across the board for everything. Runs, pitching, whatever. I'm just not interested in this game. Yeah, I mean, I can make a case for Richards here, mm-hmm. but he's like he's really frustrating to watch for DFS. He'll like strike out the side uh, twice and then give up four runs in an inning and three walks and like he's just he always has that one blow up inning. It seems like. And that sucks for 7,800. Like, he could be cruising, but that doesn't really matter. In the fifth or sixth inning, once he gets deep, uh, that pitch count's going to go way up, and he could get in trouble. Seems like it happens pretty much every time he starts. Um, So he's a guy you can mix in. It's an okay matchup against the Blue Jays, like you said. Nothing special, Uh, but I'm not targeting Richards heavily. I'm not targeting against him heavily. And then Hap on the other side has – he's been dominant in, like, any neutral to good matchup this year. And then he struggled in the, like, below average ones. And this is a below average one for sure against the Angels, all these righties. Um, so for 92 or 9,500, I'm, I'm not unhappy either. No, I get that. Um, he came up in 7% of the lines for me on DK – um, I guess it'll end up somewhere in that sort of neighborhood. I should be re- that'll probably be in and around where he's owned, and that's fine by me. Uh, it's just not that kind of game. I have the Angels stacks a little bit. I get uh, a little bit of Trout, and then it looks like Cozart, Trout, Upton, Pujols, Simmons in like three or four lines on DK. But that's basically it for me. I'm not trying to go over overwhelmingly huge on this game. Little bits of it, that's it. No Blue Jays whatsoever, actually. Yeah, Trout for 5,200 against the lefty is pretty crazy when you got 6K Mookie Betts on the other side of the spectrum. Like, yeah. uh, he should not be $5,800, or he should not be $800 cheaper than, than Betts. Um, so I think he's a fine play. I think Cozart's a fine play for 3,500. He's just been mashing lefties this year. And then on Toronto's side, I have a little bit, little bit of interest in Donaldson, Teoscar Hernandez against Garrett Richards. Okay. Yeah, I got I got zero of those guys. So okay. I'm anxious to see what their ownership is. I'm sure it'll be low. I can't I can't imagine why it wouldn't be. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, it's, I don't know. It's just an uneventful game. Uh, Marlins and Mets. Marlins, 3.6 run implied total. Mets, 3.9. It's a 53% chance to win for the Mets. Caleb Smith going for Miami. Zach Wheeler going for New York. Uh, I like both pitchers here, uh, especially on DK. Um, it's, you know, both teams with the under four implied total. Uh, Caleb Smith misses bats. Wheeler can miss bats. Uh, they have the exact same uh, projected FIP from Steamer, which I find interesting. Um, yeah, I'm going to end up with both of these guys rotated through, and I don't have a single hitter on either side. Yeah, I don't think I'm going with hitters either. Uh, a little bit of interest in Wheeler for me, 7,200 on DK. Uh He's kind of a confusing guy like Richards for me. So, like, he's had a few decent starts. He's had a couple really bad ones. Um, the Marlins are an okay matchup against either hand. So, 
Wheeler for 7,200 is a little bit interesting, especially with that run total for the Marlins. And then Smith is going up against, like, I have the Mets as the worst team in the MLB against lefties. It just couldn't be a better matchup. They're at the bottom of the league in on-base percentage, K percentage, ISO, WRC+. plus. Um, he's striking out right. He's at a 33% clip. Uh, 117 whip like everything lines up for Caleb Smith here and I think he's a pretty good pitcher like he has three really good pitches um, man and he's gonna get Conforto and Bruce probably in the lineup here I mean I love Smith he's probably my favorite point per dollar pitcher I have him above Wheeler above Richards above Hellickson Velasquez like all these guys that are priced even close to him so Smith is my guy tonight I agree with everything you just said. Uh, I have him projected for 17.6 fantasy points. Higher than Velasquez. Higher than Hillickson, like Higher than Trevor Bauer. Man. So. Yeah. I mean, I can't even disagree. Like, I, I love Smith tonight. I, I think as long as the weather holds up here and there's a little bit of concern and maybe a late start, um... As long as the weather looks okay, then Smith is going to end up on the majority of my lineups, if not close to all of them. Uh, hoping it works out a little bit better than Tanaka, but yes, yeah, Smith, that price is ridiculous for how good of a pitcher he is and how good of a matchup this is. Couldn't agree more. Yeah, the Mets have just been like super not good against lefties. Above <laughs> average strikeout rate, 69 weighted runs created plus is bad. 4% Man. below the average for hard contact. Uh, it's hard not to want to look that direction. I just wish the Marlins were better to give him a better chance at like picking up a W here. But that's not that's not really like why I would be playing Caleb Smith. I'm playing him because I think that he could fan like twelve and five and a third or something stupid. Dude. Yeah, it could be one of the like that's that's the kind of game I could see from him here where he just has like ten strikeouts and like six innings. Yeah, like. Whatever, he gives up a couple runs. I, I mean, I don't really care. I, I just think the strikeouts are going to be there for him um, almost for sure, unless for some reason his velocity is down or whatever. Like, I think he's got a great chance to have 20-plus DK points here. I would agree. I like them both. And, the, yeah, I, I literally have zero exposure to every hitter in the game. I, I won't have a hitter either side. Perfect. All right. Ooh. Pirates and Reds. Uh, Pirates, 4.9 run implied total. Reds, 4.4. 56% chance to win for the Pirates. Jamison Tyon going for Pittsburgh. Matt Harvey going for Cincinnati. Um, I have neither pitcher at all. I'll probably end up with a, <laughs> like a couple lines of Tyon just to redistribute some ownership in that salary range on DraftKings, uh, but that's probably the extent of it. Uh, the Pirates right now are my fifth most owned stack on FanDuel and my third most owned stack on DK. Gregory Prolanco is a spotlight hitter, so everything that I'm looking at right now is is for the Pirates. Yeah, I like the Pirates onslaught here. I think Tyan makes a little bit of sense. Um, I don't want to target hitters against him. I'm, I mean, I just think he's okay in that salary range. I do have Smith ahead of him, though. Agreed. So I probably won't end up with a bunch of tie-on, but I think he, he makes some sense. And then the Pittsburgh bats against Harvey. Lefties are teeing off on Harvey. 45% hard contact. He's got a 512 x XFIP against them this year. Like, And then the Pirates are just stacked with lefties. Polanco, Bell, Dickerson, Colin Moran, Austin Meadows. I like all five of those guys. Yeah, I even like Cervelli, righty righty too. Yeah, I got um, him in a ton of lines on DraftKings. Only Cervelli, thirty-five. Yeah, because of how yeah. much I like the rest of the lineup. Um, to force those stack rules, you end up getting catchers on teams with like high stack rates. So Cervelli is a guy that I'll be on a lot on DraftKings. Yeah, and it looks like some wind blowing out, eighty degrees, like in one of the best hitters parks in the MLB. Uh, I could see Harvey getting lit up i think he's really really going to struggle when he pitches at home yeah the only thing you know this one's probably going to be a little wet i don't as of right now it doesn't seem like a game that wouldn't play could be some rain delays in the middle of that 
which will probably mute my interest and tie on a little bit. Mm. But I don't have like he didn't come up in any of my crunches yet anyway. So if I have him, it's it's a line. It's two lines at best. Yeah. But uh, pirate bats. I'm just I'm doing backflips for them. First five guys look great on DraftKings. I don't have as much Chevelli on FanDuel. Uh, that ownership sort of just transitions to Colin Moran or Austin Meadows or even Jordy Mercer at 2,500 for a short step. Uh, I'm just a big fan of the Pirates. 4.9 run implied total is uh, tied for second on the slate just behind the Yankees. So, yeah, it's uh, Vegas not a big fan of Matt Harvey. No, and they shouldn't be. Uh, I don't think either of us are either. No. I, I, like I, I wanted to be when he was good five years ago or whatever. <laughs> Feels like a hundred years ago. It really does. It really does. I try to use like when I moved to North Carolina as reference points for things, and I just feel like he's been in the league forever, and it's been a decade since he's been good. And I know that's not really like totally how it is, but. I just he's just like a different he's like a totally different guy now from what he was. Yeah. It it, it changed quickly and then it was very, very public how bad he was. Yeah. <laughs> well he, you know, he, he was a little a little outspoken too. Yeah. <laughs> Not in the positive direction. No, he he's kind of an interesting fellow. Yeah. He wasn't gonna win any like uh Jackie Robinson uh like really nice player awards <laughs> at the end of the <laughs> yeah. year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's all I've got for this game. Just get a lot of Pirates in your lineup. Yep, love the Pirates. Red Sox and Rays. Red Sox, four-run <clears throat> implied total. Rays, 2.7. It's a 67% chance to win for the Red Sox. Chris Sale going for Boston. Jake Faria uh, going for Tampa. I like Sale a lot. You know, he'll hit my ownership caps tonight. Uh, he's very clearly the most expensive pitcher well, not very clearly, I guess Cole is there. And Sale is also not the most expensive pitcher on FanDuel. So, to me, he's very clearly the best pitcher is where I was trying to go with that. Uh, I like Sale quite a bit here. I have no reason that I won't pay up for him. Um, how popular do you think Chris Sale will be tonight? I think it'll be popular. Well, I mean, I think he'll be like 25 to 35%. Okay. Um, just because there are a bunch of cheap guys that you can fit in. Cole will take some ownership away from him. Yeah, I would assume Cole is a little bit lower owned than Sale. Um, but like, I don't have the Rays as being that great of a matchup for lefties. Sale kind of is matchup proof, so you don't really have to worry about that. If you have the salary, I think you play Sale and um, figure out the bats later if, if you like some of the cheap stacks. Um, so I have no problem with Sale. Like, I love him tonight. Um, I like Cole, I think, a little bit better. But it's not it's not by much. So if you say you like Sale better than Cole, then I'm not going to fight you on that. Um, what do you think about the Red Sox bats against Faria? I only get them on DK. I actually got none of them on FanDuel. And that four-run implied total is kind of the reason why. I'm surprised it's as low as it is. Um, I get bets in 7% of the lines, and then everything else is just like one or two. So I'll have some, but it's not really a great spot for offense unless you've got some thought process as to why it should be. Well, I mean, so like... BVP doesn't really matter or whatever, but um, Faria went up against the Red Sox in his first two starts um, of the season, and he had a 4.8 and 1.4% swinging strike rate. The second start, he got absolutely bombed, like eight earned runs in one and two thirds, uh, gave up a homer. That was in Fenway, so a little bit different hitting environment. Uh, like they're facing him a third time. It's only a 4.3 run total. And the Red Sox are still the best team in the MLB against righties. Yeah, they knew so, right-handed pitching. <laughs> yeah. And for some reason, they're not good against lefties yet, at least. Um, like, I like a Red Sox stack here a ton, especially if they're going to be low-owned with that run total of 4.3. It's a bad hitter's park, but um, you don't need everyone to hit home runs. And they just have so many, so many good hitters, like Bogarts and J.D. Martinez, 
Betts, of course, Hanley, Benintendi, Devers, the top six I'm on for the Red Sox. Uh, I think they're going to go under own because of that total. Yeah, it's the, the total definitely concerns me. And obviously they're expensive. I mean, you're, you're paying up for what's probably the best offense in baseball or at least close to it. Uh, they slug 490 as a team against righties, which is just like, it's really hard to look at. And I mean, like, so the Nats, who the hell is pitching against the Nats? Lauer. Yeah, okay, so the Nats slug 356 against lefties, and the Red Sox slug 490 against righties. That is just a gigantic gap. <laughs> it's so scarily high. Um, I, I like the Red Sox in theory in this game, but I'm, I'm such a, a Vegas run total homer that I have to trust it a little bit. So I, I'm not expecting to get to a ton of Red Sox. I'm, I'm honestly shocked that I got none of them on FanDuel. Like just straight zero, which is concerning to me, but... I mean, I got to trust the line. I'm hoping that that total goes up by a half run because most of that will go to the Red Sox offense because of how big of a favorite sale is. And if that happens, I think that'll really open up the Red Sox a little bit more for me. But for right now, with the way that I have them projected, uh, I just don't think there's going to be enough scoring. So I hope that's the case when all said and done, like that I don't play the Red Sox and they don't score. (laughs) Yeah, I mean... So, Faria for the season against righties, allowing nearly 40% hard contact, over 90 mile an hour, average exit velocity, under 20% Ks. Red Sox don't really K against righties. Um, I think they're going to put the ball in play, that's for sure. And it's you got really good hitters putting the ball in play, probably squaring up Faria a good amount. Um, I'm not all that worried about the park. These guys have huge power. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I mean, if they're going to go under own, then I'm going to have a ton of Red Sox, and I hope they they go under own here. Yeah, that there'll be one that I'm anxious to see their ownership because if it's sneaky high, kind of like the Yankees from yesterday, I yeah. might have to do some manual manipulation to make sure that I at least have some coverage. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, I just want a lot of Chris Sale. Yeah. And I assume I'll be underweight on Chris Sale. Oh, you think so? I'll have my cap on him probably in like the 20 to 25 range. Okay. I don't expect him to be lower than 20. Yeah, I don't think... That I, would surprise I mean, me. Has he been lower than 20 all, all year? I doubt he has been. I have no idea. Uh, he's got a 16.4 in there, but mostly 30 to 50 to 70, depending on the slate. Yeah, it's... I mean, this is obviously a monster slate. If there's ever going to be spots where, you know, ownership spreads out, it's today. But, yeah, I don't... I'm going to have quite a bit. And I'll be fine with that. But I probably will end up underweight, if I had to guess. I don't know why. Cole just doesn't seem the same, even though it's a really similar type matchup. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people just don't know that Cole has been the... Pretty much the best pitcher in the MLB this year. He's been nuts. We'll talk about him later, but sure. uh, he's been insane. Alrighty. Next one. Diamondbacks and Brewers. Diamondbacks, four run implied total. Brewers, 4.6. It's a 56% chance to win for the Brewers. Matt Cook. Cook, yep. Gets it. Finally. Oh, God damn. Uh, going for the Diamondbacks. Julie Chassin going for uh, Milwaukee. Uh, I've got one line maybe or two of Chassin, and that's it. Um, this is just a bats game for me. And uh, in particular, I'm going back to the well with the Diamondbacks, who are just crazy underpriced. But I'm thinking that I'm starting to be really, really wrong about Arizona. Uh, they are not good at hitting. <laughs> yeah, dude. I, to do. Yeah, I was just gonna say, um, 
they just seem to like they keep creeping down my rankings as far as teams go against right-handed pitchers. Yeah. So they've got a 26% K rate, um, 34% hard contact. That's fine. A 134 ISO, 287 on base percentage. That's got to be one of the top three lowest in the MLB. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're walking a decent amount, but they just don't really do anything that special. And Chassin just dominated them uh, in his yeah. last start. So, yeah, yep. like, I actually have some interest in Chassin. If there was no Caleb Smith on the slate, I would probably have a bunch of Chassin. If I had 20 laps, I'd probably have, like, three to five Chassin lineups just because he's cheap. He has been missing bats lately. And he just went seven innings, seven strikeouts against the same Arizona team in Arizona. Now at home, uh, I don't know if he's got home road splits. I don't really believe in that all that much. But um, certainly interesting here. And Diamondbacks, they're just, without Goldschmidt hitting, like they're just not that good. Goldschmidt is the only guy um, in the projected lineup today for the Diamondbacks that has a weighted runs created plus higher than 100. <laughs> so just basically below average hitters all around. And some of them are way <clears throat> below. Chris Owings, 69. Kettle oh, Marte, uh -huh. 88. Jared Dyson, 77. Nick Ahmed, 60. Alex Avila, 81. Yeah, I mean, I knew they were bad, but not like, like quantifying how bad some of these guys are. Uh, that bottom of the lineup is just strikeout city. And I wish there were more righties in the lineup. For Chassin, because he does struggle against lefties a little bit, but um, I, like I don't want to play really any Arizona bats in the state that they are in right now. Yeah, they're currently my third most owned stack on Fanduel. <laughs> they 20, are like, cheap. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, no one above three thousand other than Goldschmidt, Peralta, and Lamb. Two guys that are the only hitters that are close to average are both under three thousand. Uh, Marte is minimum salary for a second base option. So, like, they end up working so well because of their price point. And I'd be more... Like, if they didn't have a four-run implied total, I'd be concerned. But if they're cresting over four and have that low price, I'm going to want some exposure to them. Last night, I had to nerf them a bit. Uh, once I saw all my stuff, I had everybody at, like, 27 or 28%. And our ownership projections came out and had everybody on the Diamondbacks at like five or six. So I brought everybody down closer to that to spread it out a little bit. But I expect that to happen again tonight. I'll probably be double the field on the Diamondbacks, hoping that at some point in time, steamer projections balance out and the, the D-backs just wake up and be functional again. Or I just keep hemorrhaging money on a team from Arizona. <laughs> yeah. I'm not stacking up Arizona tonight. Um, it would take a, me a lot of lineups to get to an Arizona stack on DK, I think. Uh, but Chassin will be probably in my mix of pitchers. I'll probably have a little bit of exposure to him uh, if I don't go in 100% on Caleb Smith. I do like the Brewers bats on Fanduel. Yeah. Um, I don't get to them really on DK, but... Yelich is only 3,600. Kane is only 3,300. Shaw only 3,500. Um, I'll end up with probably like average 6% exposure across the board for Brewers guys on FanDuel. Oh, yeah. I love the Brewers. Um, Cook, a ton of hard contact against both sides. Uh, not a great XFIP or anything. Like, just nothing special about this guy. And Yelich and Shaw are two of my favorite plays on the entire slate at their respective positions. I like Santana. Um, Aguilar is crushing the ball. Lorenzo Cain leading off. It's a balanced lineup, and Cook isn't especially good against either hand. So I like the top five or six for the Brewers, um, and that's making me like Chassin a little bit more, sort of that correlation play. If he's got some run support, he can mow these guys down, I think. So... We'll see. I get it. Yeah. It's going to be a game that I'm going to need to pay attention to because I'm tired of looking stupid with the Diamondbacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Indians and Cubs. Indians 4.3 run implied total. Cubs 4.2. It's a 51% chance to win for the Indians. 
Uh, Trevor Bauer going for Cleveland. Tyler Chatwood going for the Cubs. Uh, I end up with like a decent amount of Bauer because he's easy to pay up for, but I don't really like it. Um, I'll probably redistribute a lot of his ownership downward <clears throat> as we get closer to lock. And he's not someone that I'm ending up with at all on FanDuel. Uh, this is mostly just Indians bats for me, which kind of surprised me. Yeah, I mean, Bauer's got the stuff to dominate the Cubs. There's no doubt about it. It's just the price point I'm a little bit worried about. I'd rather get up to Cole or Sale if I'm going up in the, you know, past double digits um, yeah. on DK. So he's just priced too closely for not, to them. He'll be super contrarian if you want to take a, a shot on him. It's good pitching weather. Um, I'm surprised the Indians only have a 3.8 run total despite that pitching weather. Not a lot of respect for or a lot of respect for Tyler Chatwood. You and I have way different implied totals. Whoa. Yeah, we do. Let me make, what sure, do I, let me make sure I didn't make a typo. I'm seeing this game only is like a seven and a half total. I, I, is that right? I mean, if it is, I probably entered eight and a half. Maybe. I, I don't know. Oh, uh, okay. So I know exactly what happened. Uh, this line didn't exist an hour and a half ago. Oh, okay. Of the Cubs. Yeah, yeah. Because um, of the wind. So I went with something else, which was. Yeah, I went eight and a half. It came out seven and a half, and now it's. it's Well, it opened at eight, moved to seven and a half at Pinnacle, and now it's climbing a little bit. So I'm going to say it's somewhere in like the seven, seven, five range. Okay. And if I do that. Um, yeah, I've got the Indians then at 3.9. Uh, that bumps Trevor Bauer's projection up by a half point. So it'll yeah, also I mean, nerf the Indians a little bit. Yeah, that's why. I, I mean, I don't pay attention to Vegas that much, but I was expecting a bigger total here. Wind was um, blowing in when I looked at the weather. Uh, so I thought I was probably... Like, eight and a half felt high to me. I guess I was right, because it's going to congregate around eight by the time this is all done. Yeah. So a little bit worried about the Indians. Um, that weather's a, a little bit concerning. I like Lindor and Ramirez and Brantley, though. Those just three really good hitters to start off <clears throat> against a righty like Chatwood, who I'm not crazy about. Uh, will give up some hard hits to lefties. And Wrigley's a good hitting park, of course, even when the weather is not ideal. These guys can get it out. So, the top three Indians for me. Just just top three? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. No I, I Yeah, I mean, he's fine, too. I just, I don't end up playing him that much. I really like playing those top three against righties. Um, I mean, are you going to play Melky Cabrera or Kipnis? Because I can't see myself doing that. I got zero Melky Cabrera. Uh, I will have Kipnis. I'm a, I'm like an oddly large Jason Kipnis fan, and I'm not sure why. It probably, it's probably because of some video game from seven years ago. <laughs> but he always registers in my head really well. I think it's because I had him in an OOTP season, and I always strive to get like decent lefty bats since they'll face righty pitching more. And I'll usually like have a bunch of decent platoon options after that. Not that that's important at all to this, but 2500 for a second baseman. Um, he'll come along for the ride a little bit. The Indians exposure, though, is going to go down quite a bit on my refresh of my crunches just because I just shaved off like five or six tenths of a run from what I was expecting. So, yeah. Uh, while I do like those top three, specifically on, on DK, uh, and for me, top four, so Lindor, Brantley, Ramirez, and Encarnacion all look like solid options. But if this implied total is going to be under four for both of the teams, uh, my exposure in this game is going to be relatively limited. Yeah. It is going to make me like Trevor Bauer slightly more, though. I don't have an issue with Bauer at all. So, I mean, if you want to play Bauer for 11-7 and you can't get up to sale or... Cole, then I think he's a fine play. He is a really awesome pitcher. At least he has been this year. So um, I used to hate him, uh, even like as as late as last year. 
but he's definitely been really, really good, so I can't argue against that. He's someone that I don't want to be overweight on, but I don't know why. Oh, I mean, I think he's got, like, awesome stuff. Like, he could have 30-plus points here, and I, I wouldn't be shocked at all, even against a good Cubs team. Like, I might be happy with having too much of him today if Sale and Cole have some sort of weirdly high ownership. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. Bauer is going to be a guy that I will adjust, uh, like, based on game theory thought process once we get closer to lock. All right, Yankees and Rangers. This one's one we got to talk about. Uh, Yankees five point two run implied total. Rangers four point three. It's a sixty percent chance to win for the Yankees. Domingo, yeah, Domingo Herman going for New York. Cole Hamels <clears throat> going for Texas. Um, I got to like a couple lines worth of Herman. He's another guy that's just in the same gap or in same chunk of like similar-ish salary people. You know, decent chance to pick up a win. Pretty decent stuff, but like not the best pitcher in the world. Um, I'll get a couple lines with him just for differentiation of having a ton of lines. And as per usual, I don't want any Cole Hamels, but I do want hitters against him. Yeah. Uh, so Turns out we're going to again, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, of course. It's Cole Hamels day. That means I lose money. Uh, he got scratched last start, so we got, we got saved from him then. But It's the only way it ever like, happens, too. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Herman, like, I really like the idea of targeting against Texas. I don't care what they did to Tanaka last night. I, he just didn't have it. Um, so that's fine. A lot of pick, I mean, you're not going to have it every start. And he didn't. It was tough hitting environment or tough pitching environment. Same thing again tonight. Super risky to play Herman, but only two starts so far. So we're dealing with small samples, but he's got a 33.8 with per swing percentage, which would put him in the top 10 in the MLB. Um, I, I mean, I don't expect him to go super deep. He had a nine strikeout game with 84 pitches against the Indians in his first start, which is nuts. Like, yeah. it's really hard to strike out nine guys in six innings, six innings against the Indians. Um, so he's got some upside for sure. I'm not expecting more than, like, 85, 90 pitches here. But if he can give you five or six innings at this price – um, I think he could be a really awesome play. So him and Smith are going to be the two guys that I'm really focusing on in this low tier for pitching. I agree. Um, they they both have really good. They're in really good spots. Rangers are dog shit against righties. You know, 77 weighted runs created plus 373 slugging, just atrocious. Higher than average K rate. No reason not to look at them. That Yankees one is so weird for me last night. Like, I didn't have a ton of the Yankees stacks. And if you, like, you know, it was Torres hit two home runs, Walker hit one, Hicks hit one. Like, it's not like they got bludgeoned by Gregorius, Stanton, Sanchez. Yeah. Like, Judge got one, which, you know, doesn't shock me at all. But uh, the guys that I would have had tons of, it, like, the guys that I did have tons of exposure to for the Yankees were the ones that sucked. So, yeah. What are we gonna? Me. What are the Yankees gonna lead off Torres or put him in the top six? He's been raking, and he's batting ninth. Uh, this is like the Jackie Bradley thing a few years ago with the Red Sox. Oh, yeah, I remember that. And they're they're still doing it. Like you could you can bat him first. Like there's no rules against it. Just because a guy's crushing in the nine hole doesn't mean you have to keep putting him there. You can get him an extra at bat per game. But would you want to swap him out for Gardner? Yeah, Gardner, I mean, Gardner's nothing special. I don't think he's some sort of great hitter. He just hits in front of guys like Judge, Stanton, Sanchez, so his stats are going to be inflated. I mean, and, on a day like today, I wouldn't want Gardner to be leading off, but... Right, Torres, righty versus righty, lefty? I, I probably would. Oh, man. If he somehow is leading off today, he'll be chalky, but um, like, I don't want to play him in the nine hole just because that sucks, playing a guy batting ninth. Um, Especially but, at that price point, you don't right. you don't usually see a guy in the nine hole at forty one hundred. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's that's what sucks about it. So I don't know. I like Yankees bats mostly the big three. So Judge, Stanton, Sanchez, two, three, four, um, 
as one offs as many stacks against Hamels, but I don't think I'm like all in on the Yankees stack. I do like Hicks and Austin a little bit too. Um, so I'll probably have one, maybe two full Yankee stacks, but not going super overboard against Hamels, who has been a lot better than I've given him credit for. I've got 10% uh, Miguel Andohar too. Um, only yeah. 3,600. I think that's not bad to get a third baseman. Yankees, my fourth most owned stack, which is honestly pretty commendable for how much uh, I generally don't like Aaron Judge from a fantasy perspective. I, I say how much I don't like him as if it's like some personal decision. I hate every Yankee equally uh, because they're the Yankees, um, but numbers are numbers. So when they come out, it's not as if I'm just like, oh, got to take my 6% reduction to Aaron Judge for being Aaron Judge. Right. Just, just how the, just how it ends up coming out. So, yeah. I'll have a decent amount of Yankees. I'll probably be under the field since they're usually, you know, they've got the highest run total. They're going to be super popular. They're the Yankees too, so mm-hmm. I'll be underweight, I would imagine. I'll have Stanton and Sanchez will probably hit my ownership caps. Um, they usually do, especially in situations where they get to face Cole Hamels. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. It's hard to not like the Yankees. Agreed. I mean, now like looking through it, like I like all these guys a little bit individually, all the way through Torres. Um, I'm not playing Gregorius, I don't think. Lefty, lefty. Uh, he's just in a huge slump, too. I think he finally got a hit yesterday. But Gardner and Gregorius are iffy for me, but the rest of the guys make sense. So... Maybe a little bit more Yankees than I thought even before this game, before we started talking about it. Yeah. Keep an eye on their ownership. Uh, would you say they're the most popular stack of the night? Um, yeah, I mean, I think so. Maybe them or the Cardinals just because of their price. Um, yeah, I don't really see like a slam dunk stack. I mean, I'd rather have the Red Sox, I think, over the Yankees if you factor in ownership. Right. Um. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't see any like slam dunk stacks outside of the Yankees who have a huge run total. Yeah, that, that combination of being the Yankees, so naturally people look at them. Their top guys, Judge, Stanton, Sanchez, all the type of guys that like you want to roster because they have major power. It's big implied, like it's they're going to be really popular. I agree with you. I agree with what you said. Um, if their ownerships end up where I would expect them to, I feel like the Red Sox are a significantly better play. Uh, yeah. in a in a tournament setting. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Giants and Astros. Giants, 2.8 run implied total. Astros, 4.7. It's a 71% chance to win for the Astros. We haven't had a lot of those. Andrew Suarez going for San Francisco. Garrett Cole going for Houston. Hard to not love Cole. He'll hit my ownership caps. He'll be popular. Um... You know, he's Garrett Cole. He's really good at his job. Should mow down a ton of Giants. Giants strike out at an above average clip against righties. They do get a lot of hard contact, though. So I guess there's a little bit of fear there. But for me, it's lots of Garrett Cole. Maybe two or three lines worth of Astros hitters. And and that's mostly it here. I thought they I would like Astros hitters more than I do. I'm honestly very surprised that I don't have more of them. Yeah, I mean, I love Cole. He, I think he's my top point projected pitcher on the night uh, over Sale. Oh, and really? Then, yeah, I mean. I've got Sale like, by four. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah I've gotten closer than that. I, I have Cole for more. Um, I'm probably more wrong than right there. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. Could be right. So like Cole, has, Cole has at least 11 strikeouts in five of his nine starts this year. 16% swinging strike rate, top five whiffs per swing. Um, so him and Sale just have similar upside where they can just rack up 13 strikeouts in seven or eight innings and um, get you 40-plus DK points. Uh, I'm kind of expecting a start like that tonight out of Cole against this Giants team who is like a average matchup, but Cole has just been insane. That run total kind of says it all. So Vegas, ton of respect for Cole. Um, I see a lot of strikeouts near the bottom of this order for him, and I just think he cruises to a bunch of strikeouts. So if you can afford him, I love him. 
Yeah, I, I agree. Um, he'll be in, you know, most of what I do on both sides. <clears throat> mm-hmm. uh, I'd say the Astros are in another situation similar to the Red Sox, where it's possible they're underowned. Yeah, and uh, if they are, it's another case of like a bunch of righty bats against a lefty. Right? Yeah, no, Red Sox don't have a lefty. They have Faria. <clears throat> I love the Astros tonight too. Um, Fangraphs crashing on me. Uh, so I like Springer, like Correa, Bregman, Altuve. These guys really aren't striking out that much against lefties. They have good hard contact numbers and all this stuff. Like. Their ISOs are down, like especially Altuve. Um, But there's no reason to think that they shouldn't be crushing lefties. And they're priced down. Bregman, 3,700. Correa, 42. Uh, Gary L still 34. I like Gaddis for 3,300. If Max Stacy, or is it Stacy? He's in the lineup. I like him for 3,500. And I, I like all these Astros. So could be another pivot to the Yankees. Suarez giving up 50% hard contact to righties this year, um, over 90.5 mile an hour average exit velocity, and Dasher should put the ball in play. I'm not entirely sure what's <clears throat> keeping my ownership down so far for the Astros, but if I had to guess, this team will climb in my exposure closer to yeah. the lock. I mean, I, I love them. So, like, they're right up there with the Yankees for me. They're right up there with the Red Sox for me. So, I'm just going to play the ownership game um, as I get closer to lock. Um, this is the one that I want to see when uh, Alex drops his rankings. Mm-hmm. I want to see how well ranked the Astros are. Because if they're not that high and that kind of matches what I've got going... I might just say, okay, that's not going to be my spot tonight. I have a feeling he'll be on the Astros as a pivot. I agree. Orioles and White Sox. Orioles 4.5 run implied total. White Sox 4.0. It's a 55% chance to win for the Orioles. Kevin Gaussman going for Baltimore. James Shields going for Chicago. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting... <clears throat> overwhelming amounts of Gaussman tonight and obviously we hate James Shields so the Orioles are quite the stack for me number one stack for me on FanDuel my number five stack on DK Uh, I'm gonna have a lot of Baltimore and I'm not gonna have a lot of James Shields talk to me about Gaussman interesting um I'm not on Gaussman or really the Orioles so we're on we're on opposite sides here okay um He's got some home run problems. He doesn't have his catcher, Caleb Joseph, anymore. Uh, he's not throwing, like, his best pitches as much. And that's sort of that's what Joseph was so good at, was was getting Gaussman to throw his, his nasty stuff. Um, like, I don't know. So I'm just not on Gaussman. I'm worried about him without Joseph. Uh, Chance Sisko is not a good, like, game caller. He's not a good defensive catcher. So I'm worried about him. Um, and then Shields has missed bats. Like we said it before the, the Rangers start last time, and he went out and had a really good start. He can miss bats at times, and the Orioles aren't even that bad of a matchup. So I'm not full stacking them. I mean, Machado, Scope, those two guys I like. But I'm not going all out Baltimore stack. Um, so I guess I'm higher on Shields than you are in terms of I don't want to just full stack against him. James Shields is like the right-handed Cole Hamels. <laughs> Shields XFIP on the season, 5.2. Yeah. With a 253 BABIP, he struck out 5.9 guys per nine right now. He, like he, Nothing he's doing is any good. His ERA sucks. His K rate sucks. His walk rate sucks. Like He sucks. So, oh, yeah. I can't help it. I'm surprised the Orioles only have a 4.5 run implied total, to be perfectly honest. I'm going to have think, a, an, an overwhelming amount of Orioles tonight. Yeah, I think that's more Royals. Or I'm, I'm sure that's more because of the Orioles um, than Shields. Yeah. I, just because they haven't been all that great against righties. Actually, they've been pretty bad. Like, I've got them as the third worst team against righties. Yeah. So I'm 
I'm not looking to stack them up. Um, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if Shields gets hammered here. But, but I'll just take the L then and move on to the next day. I hope he does get hammered. Uh, Trey Mancini, I'll have a... Well, he'll hit my max on FanDuel. I don't have him much on DK. He's just got a much better price point on FanDuel. And with the dual eligibility for him on DraftKings, it's basically irrelevant because the other two first base options are two guys with lower prices and bigger power. So it's hard to put Mancini in at first if you could have Chris Davis or Trumbo. Um, so Mancini, Jones, Machado is a spotlight hitter. Uh, scope was yesterday, could have easily been there for me again today. Um, I'll take Chris Davis. I'll have a bunch of Trumbo on FanDuel. I like Pedro Alvarez quite a bit on FanDuel. Um, yeah, they're, like I said, they're my number one stack on FanDuel. They'll be in my top three for sure, barring any weird changes to this game. Um, it's a lot of it is price. You know, everybody's super cheap outside of Machado, and you know, you don't really care what you're paying for him. Yeah. And, I, you know, if Shields is going to be a guy that has a 5.2 X fit, I'm going to bet on more games like he had on May 12th where he gave up five earned in six innings compared to going seven and a third and only giving up three hits against Texas. That's the aberration to me. Um, yeah, for sure. So I'm going to be fully against the White Sox. I can't figure out why I have so much Kevin Gossman other than just, like, that's the way the cookie crumbles today or however the hell I should use that saying. But he hit my ownership caps on both sites. <laughs> and yeah. I wouldn't have picked that prior to hitting the crunch button. Yeah, I don't I don't think I'm going to have any Gaussman. I actually love Moncada against Gaussman, just that power-speed combo. Gaussman gives up some hard contact. Um, and if Moncada gets on, he could easily steal on Gaussman. So for 4000 at second base, that is a really, really attractive option to me. Yeah, I don't. Th that one caught me off guard. I assume so long as his ownership isn't projected to be high, um, I assume that he won't come out graded all that well with Alex and he'll have relatively low ownership. And if that's the case, and this still comes up the way it is, like if he's projected for, I don't know, 5%, I'll cut the 20 that I have him there for down to like 11 or 12 and redistribute that against like Velasquez, Cahill, Tyon, just like I was talking about before. I won't need to be that far over the field on uh, on Kevin Gaussman because I don't totally get it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, it is what it is. It When things like that pop up, I, I honestly like it. It gives me a reason to dig in to try to, like, reverse engineer why that would be happening. Yep. All right. Tigers and Twins. God, there's so many games. We're not even close. Yeah. I'll go quick here. Yeah. This one, this uh, one. Tigers, 3.9 run implied total. Twins, 4.8. It's a 59% chance to win for the Twins. Mm -hmm. Matt Boyd going for Detroit. Uh, resident... Minnesota Homer Jake is going to be going with Lance Lynn. So go ahead. Just get it out of the way now. Yeah, $4,500. It looks like a misprice on DK. Uh, he's been bad the last couple times out, but those are matchups against the Angels and Cardinals. So I'm willing to give him a little bit of a pass. He was getting whiffs and swinging strikes before that at actually a really good rate over his first few starts. Um, so I, he can miss bats against this Tigers lineup, who is pretty awful. And then his weakness is lefty power. And, like, Goodrum's got some power. Leonis Martin does. Victor Martinez, not really as much anymore. He's going to get six to seven righties here. And $4,500, minus 153 favorite now. Um, at home, I, I think Lynn can have a really nice start here and get you 15 to, to 18 DK points. And you'll take that all day for 4500 on a huge slate. I like Lynn as well. I have him in 9% of my FanDuel lines, 13% of my DK lines. Uh, you know, he has basically no salary today. 4500 on DK is, might as well be non-existent. Yeah. Um, I think he's really easy to get to. It's a great spot. Uh, only concern really would just be that the Tigers don't strike out all that much against righties. But it's not as if there's some sort of scary lineup. 
Uh, Castellanos is the only guy projected with a steamer weighted runs created plus higher than 100. So that's a similar sound as it was before. You know, that's the second time I've said something like that. Only other guy that's close is Vmar. Everybody else is in the 70s and 80s. So uh, the Tigers' offense, not that great. Or at least not projected to be that great. They've honestly been better than I would have expected to date. Although Miguel Cabrera, Miguel Cabrera probably helps that a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll end up on Lynn. And I like the Twins bats quite a bit. Um, that's usually not that rare for me either. They are my... One, two, three, four, five. They're my sixth most owned stack on both sites. So I will have decent amounts of exposure to them. Brian Dozier will continue to be popular, I would imagine. But I like everybody there. Kepler, Escobar, uh, Rosario. I get a lot of Mitch Garver because of his price point on FanDuel and because of the fact that he's a catcher on DraftKings. Um, I like it. I like the twins across the board here. Me too. Uh, I'm not worried about the lefty lefty with Kepler and Rosario. Those guys have been crushing lefties this year, especially Kepler. Um, so I I love Escobar. Just a lot of value here. Yeah. Like the highest price in the top five is four thousand for Dozier and Rosario. I love the top five for the Twins, and that's probably how I would stack it up. Agreed. Um, yeah, love the Twins set. I get a little bit. You won't be surprised by this. Uh, Robbie Grossman pops up quite a bit for me on FanDuel minimum salary. So, Yeah, no no issues with that. Same with Adriazana on FanDuel. Again, minimum salary. Uh, when you can get guys at minimum salary and they're in the lineup, it's it's not like they can... like You don't you don't have the ability to like give your better guys extra at-bats. So he, the opportunities are there one way or the other. So I like yep. capitalizing on low-priced guys as part of full stacks yep all righty three more royals and cardinals royals 3.4 run implied total cardinals 4.9 it's a 66 percent chance to win for the cardinals jason hamill going for kansas city luke weaver going for st louis uh you'll be surprised to know that i'll be maxing out on luke weaver and i could probably just repeat whatever the hell i've said about luke weaver for the past three weeks I uh, love the Cardinals on both sites. Um, I don't get to a ton of Tommy Pham on DK. And the fact that it reads as zero right now makes me feel like it's because of a naming issue and that he's actually should be in there. So I'm going to check that out right now. And uh, I'm going to let you talk about how much you probably don't like Luke Weaver. Yeah, I mean, he had a good start last time out. Uh it's just the matchup. Like, if it was a better matchup, I'd probably have some interest and a better price for Weaver. Um, the Royals just aren't striking out against righties this year or against really anyone. They've got a, what is it, 17% K rate, lowest in the league against righties. They hit them hard. Like, I'm not expecting Weaver to get blown up here, but I just don't really see the K upside. I'd rather <clears throat> save, save 4,000 and go with Lance Lynn. Or save two thousand, go with Caleb Smith. Um, so no Weaver for me, and then I love the Cardinals bats, all the guys you mentioned, really. So they're <clears throat> they're in the top five or six stacks for me, up there with Houston, Boston, Yankees, uh, Nationals. So love St. Louis. Cool. Uh, turns out, yeah, just a bug in the formula for adding up exposures. Tommy Pham was showing up a lot in the third outfielder spot which wasn't being included when i added everything up so he was in the lines he just wasn't being totaled up to see it i mm-hmm. uh, love the cardinals first four love them even more on Fanduel. uh happily go to jed jerko at 2600 dexter fowler colton wong i like all of that there but the first four guys for me um on both sites are would be the direction i'm going fam carpenter martinez and ozuna and i'll be maxing out weaver uh, anxious to see what his ownership looks like on FanDuel. To me, it's a no-brainer. Sixty-four hundred is a really ridiculous price point for him for sort of his pedigree. On DK, he's priced, you know, I would say where he should be. But to get him at sixty-four hundred on FanDuel is kind of ludicrous. Yeah, uh, that that is a much better price over on FanDuel, where the win is uh, weighted more heavily, minus two twenty favorite. 
Uh, and then Hamill, just to drive home the point, he just doesn't K guys. He gives up a bunch of hard hits. XFIP over five. I think that he's done um, as far as being a serviceable MLB pitcher. And I love the Cardinals. Great prices. Uh, I love Ozuna. Love Fam Jose Martinez. Like all these guys are in play for me against Hamill. Yeah, Weaver is the 21st most expensive pitcher on FanDuel. He's $100 cheaper than James Shields. <laughs> yeah, that's so, pretty ridiculous. Yeah, you just... I don't have a choice. I don't have a choice. And he'll be super popular on FanDuel. He kind of has to be. I mean, I hope he's not, but I'd be shocked if he wasn't. Yeah. All righty, two more. Mariners and A's. Mariners, 3.8 run implied total. <laughs> A is 4.7. It's a 41... Per, I don't know why I'm saying it like that. 59% chance to win for the A's. Uh, Mike Leake going for Seattle. Trevor Cahill going for Oakland. Uh, I got to very little... or I got to a very little amount of Trevor Cahill on DK. Again, he's one of those guys that are just in that group of mid-priced pitchers. So I'll have a line or two with him. And then I don't have either bat... Any bats on either side. Oh, no Oakland? No Oakland. Wow. I, I love stacking against Leak, and I'm probably going to do that again tonight. So the A's will be in my mix of stacks. It's solid prices all the way around. Leak gets hit hard by both righties and lefties. So I'm going to be looking at the three through six with Chapman, Lowry, Olsen. Um, well, actually, two through six, uh, or two through five, I mean. Probably not Kana for 3,500. Um so Joyce, Chapman, Lowry, and Olsen, I like them all. Yeah, I don't mind Joyce as a one-off. Uh, has a nice price point on both sites. Um, but yeah, they're just not a team that I'm going to end up with uh, exposure to. So I hope they don't do well because their implied total implies like they could be a little bit more popular than 0%. Yeah. Um, yeah, just not a direction I'm going today. Yeah. Uh, Cahill, I'm a little bit worried about. His velocity was down in the last start against the Red Sox. Had that one disaster inning. I mean, it was only down like one mile per hour, and he, he skipped a start before that. So not all that concerning, but the Mariners matchup isn't great as far as strikeouts go. So I think I'm more at a wait-and-see stage with Cahill for 7,400. Yeah, like I said, I mean – I'd say if I had 150 lines on DraftKings, I'll have him in three. So okay. just yeah. just enough to spread out across that salary range because I don't have any real confidence on that section that he's in. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's understandable. Uh, Rockies and Dodgers, final game. Uh, Rockies, 3.6 run implied total. Dodgers, 4.4. Nope, 4.2. Apparently I'm really bad at reading. Uh, 57% chance to win for the Dodgers. Chad Bettis going for Colorado. Brock Stewart going for L.A. Uh, I have neither pitcher at all, and I basically have neither uh, offense. Uh, highest ownership I have of anybody is Jock Peterson at 2% on FanDuel. Uh, he's just a one-off guy that has popped up. I don't. I have one stack of the Rockies and one stack of the Dodgers. This game might as well just not happen. I wish it would just get rained out so I didn't have to look at it. Yep, I don't really like anything in this game outside of Grandall and Turner, who's just too cheap for 3600 Grandall just smoking righties this year. So those two guys, and that is about all I have. No interest in Stewart, no interest in Rockies bats. Um, not really looking to stack against Bettis. Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I got. All righty. Let's look at crunches. Let's do it. If they ever uh, come up, they'll be on the tab that I have open right now. It appears like Fantasy Cruncher is moving just a skosh slow today. There we go. Ah, we're getting there. Still getting there. Still getting there. St 
still getting there. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Apparently, I should have tried to refresh this tab earlier. Everyone's trying to jam in all that Caleb Smith. They're trying yeah, to get their crushes at, in early. At 10, 15 a.m. Eastern yeah. time. You gotta. Exactly. I mean, what what else could people be doing? Now I just can't even scroll down. It's just... I think I'm there. I think it stopped. There we go. There all right, go. give me two pictures. Um, let's see. Caleb Go with Smith. Plus Smith. Who? Um, who's another guy you like? Smith and I, mean, I probably would have answered like Gossman <clears throat> or something, but it's only one. So you can get to a bunch of coal or sail. Yeah, try sail. Okay. Um, so we're looking at Twins Nat stack. Mm -hmm. Um, again, That's Rendon. Uh. Diamondbacks, Nats, which is a bit more popular for me. Another Twins, Nats stack. Yep. Ooh, Pirates, Nats. That I like. One, yeah. two, three, four from the Pirates. Uh, you get Taylor in that stack for the Nats with Rendon and Turner. And then, you know, your flyer on Soto. Cardinals, Nats. You get Harper, Matt Carpenter, Rendon. That's probably the most powerful one that I've seen. Yeah, I like that. It's so easy to get to what you really want to get to, like every day. That's why that's that's why it's so hard to just answer like, you know, coin flip questions in uh, the live chat, because I right. can put together a scenario where I get to both of those guys and have a a lineup that's, you know, basically the exact same overall projection. It's all about balancing that ownership on the opposite side. Um, Great. <clears throat> If I looked at Luke Weaver and Gaussman, what are the lineups that are coming up here? Okay, so Yankees, Orioles with all the good shit. Nats, Pirates, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, five. Like that's a that's a loaded hitting lineup right there in the middle. Yep, you can do a lot. And we haven't even gotten to Lance Lynn, like I'm sure you could do a ton with him and Sale or Cole, and like there, man, there's so many stacks that I like tonight. Like just scrolling down, Nats, Pirates, Brewers, Red Sox, Yankees, Astros, um, Twins, A's, Cardinals. Like that, I just list off like eight that I like. Yeah, you can do Lance Lynn and Sale with. Uh, one, two, three, five from the Nats. So Turner, Harper, Rendon, Severino, and then Fam, Carpenter, Jose Martinez, and Ozuna from the Cardinals. So like the best parts of the Nats and Cardinals can be mm -hmm. in a sale Lance Lynn stack. That's why mm -hmm. DK is so hard, man. There's just so many options. Yes, there are. And then on FanDuel, so that uh, I don't get yelled at in the comments again, we can look down at the crunches. Um, I mean, Luke Weaver, to me, is the best pitching option on FanDuel. We'll see where the ownership goes to see if that uh, stays that direction. The only reason I don't ever want to look at um, the crunches for FanDuel is because there's less variability. Like, once you pick a pitcher... You know, things can look very similar. So yeah. top lines, if you go to Weaver, you know, all the best parts of Nats and Cardinals with Stanton as a one-off. You can get Scope as a one-off. But I'm going to get... It's just really easy to get to a lot of one-off stuff here. For sure. A lot of Pirates, Orioles, Nats. Like you could, If you have Luke Weaver... Uh, you can have whatever hitting you'd like on FanDuel. It's always appealing. That's why I'll have a lot of them. Uh, no hockey tonight, right? No hockey tonight. Yeah, there's not a lot to talk about other than baseball. This is just a 15-game slate of of baseball. and I don't know. Sports are getting thin. We're starting to get into that yes, time yeah. where it's baseball and nothing else, unless you're a huge WNBA fan. Yeah. I got nothing. Check out Spotlight Hitters, Pitchers, Stacks. Uh, they'll be up by the time you hear this. Um, like and subscribe. Follow us on Twitter. 
That's all I got. It's kind of an uneventful Tuesday. Yeah, good hey. luck, guys. Yeah, good luck. Oh, watch everybody. the live stream. Watch We've been the live going stream. way too long at this point. Live show, yeah, live stream tonight. Uh, Jake and Chris, I'll pop in for a little bit, give my home run picks. Uh, Chris got a dong last night, so you'll hear him gloat about that in eight hours. Yes. So enjoy that. Best of luck tonight. We'll talk to you again in the morning.